right, so this episode, we're going to talk about something a little controversial, something that I know a lot of the fellas are not going to like. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you right now. So if you don't want to hear me have a conversation about what men can do to be better for women, you can turn this off right now. This is about the time you can turn it off because we're about to have a dialogue about accountability. And this is not to, I'm never bashing people. That is never my goal. My goal is to never hurt people's feelings and make people feel, um, you know, smaller at all. But my goal is to, you know, suggest better ways that you could make your love life and your intimate life with your person, whether you're in a situation ship or whether you got a little fling going on, you see sex partner, your girlfriend or your wife, you know, um, my goal is to find ways to suggest you know, a way that you can have better success with women. And what I did is I came up with a list, a list of reasons why your girlfriend might have lost respect for you. Um, when you're in a relationship, especially a long-term relationship, let's say two, three years, um, you know that sometimes the relationship changes. You know, at one point in the time you was in that honeymoon phase and you know, everything was beautiful and you were able to hold each other's attention for hours and you wanted to spend all day with each other and all of these beautiful things that came from the relationship because the energy was fresh and it was new. But somewhere down the line, the longer you guys continue to become, you know, to be with each other, you found yourself having less patience with each other and you found yourself having um, less of, you know, less of a spark. You know, you didn't want to feel, you didn't feel as inspired to be up under them and you know you wanted more space from them at one point you couldn't get away from each other and now you just look toward every moment where you could have to yourself because you feel like you need it just to keep your sanity just to keep you from ripping their head off and you know that's something that all people go through in relationships if you say that you don't um you're probably a motherfucking liar respectfully and so these are for the people who actually know what i'm talking about and for people who live real life. I'm always looking for the real lifers. I'm looking for the people who don't have a perf a perfect rap sheet. I'm looking for the people who made mistakes along the way because that's who I am. I'm a person who, every single thing that I'm gonna tell you on this list are mistakes that I made, things that I personally realized was wrong and I found the right way to do it. I found the right way to do it. So if there's a guy out there who's a young dude, maybe 19, 22, 23, or maybe you even older because growth is not a linear process, right? Um, we might even be the same age. I'm 30, but that doesn't mean that you've learned what I've learned. And as a person who has, you know, I would say I've had a pretty successful career with women in my life. Um, I can tell you that all of these things are battle tested and very true. And if you have a disagreement, disagree with me. Holla at me, man. Send me a comment. Um, you know, send me a comment, send me a DM, you know, let me know because, um, the whole point of Halfway Up is to have meaningful dialogue. And even if I am wrong, maybe somebody can find the truth in you being right. I, I'm completely fine with that. My ego is not so big that, um, you know, I can't admit that I could be wrong sometimes. And maybe you could teach me something. Hey, because if, if I'm learning, then I'm living better. You know, knowledge really is power, as they say. So with that being said, I got five reasons, five reasons why your girlfriend has lost respect for you. Yes, fellas, we about to get into the nitty gritty. We about to talk about the shit that'll hopefully make you look in the mirror and be honest with yourself. All right, so number one, one of the main reasons why your girlfriend might have lost respect for you is because you could be leading from a place of insecurity. Now, what do I mean from a place of insecurity? If you are expecting your woman to follow you or submit to you out of a place of jealousy, out of a place of anxiousness, out of a place of stress, irritation, then you are not asking her to lead you in the proper way. When you are going to be a leader, it needs to come from a place of purity, not pain, not hurt, not weakness. Um, it needs to come from a place of purity. Now I know no man is perfect, I'm not perfect, and we human, so you're not always gonna be performing at your best. Some days your best is gonna be a four, and some days your best is gonna be a 10. It varies, and um, I understand that very much so, but as a man, it is always your duty to make sure that if people are going to follow you, that you need to be trying your best to lead them to the right place, a place of harmony, a place of balance, a place of success. And you cannot do that when you're leading from a place of negative emotions. A leader who is leading their people properly, he leads from a place of being whole, 
You know, you're not going to a relationship with a woman and you're expecting her to be the other half to complete yours. That is not leading from a place of security. That is not leading from a place of being pure. Um, when you're leading from a place of being pure, you're leading from a place of confidence. You're leading from a place of security, comfortability, peace, harmony, balance, happiness. This is where you lead from as a man. Because when you're leading from a place of insecurity, your woman might not know what it is about you that she can't really get behind. You know, she might not even really be able to articulate herself personally what it is about her that makes her not want to listen to you or what makes her not want to, um, what, what makes her want to defy you. But it's, it's something that she feels. It's something that she can innately and intuitively understand that, you know, it's not safe to run behind you. It's not safe to walk side by side with you because you're not thinking clearly. You know, it's kind of like you driving, but you're driving while you're sleepy a little bit. So you are driving, you're technically getting a mile closer or a mile closer, but the chances of you um, running into somebody or making a mistake and causing y'all to have an accident is a lot higher because you're not rested. So whenever you're leading from a place of unrest, you potentially have both of y'all lives in y'all hands and you potentially are a threat to the both of you because to be a leader means you're the person that's driving. For the most part, metaphorically speaking, like, follow follow me, follow me. You know, like you're technically driving the car and she's in the passenger seat and you're expecting her to just remain calm and be cool. But whole time she sees you nodding off. Whole time she sees you rubbing your eyes and you, you squinting extra hard. You holding on to the steering wheel because you're tired and you need to rest. And it's okay to rest. And it's okay to not be perfect. It's perfectly fine to look yourself in the mirror and have a wake up call and realize like, you know what? I'm not leading from a place of security. What is it that I need to do to get myself rebalanced? Everybody needs to get balanced sometimes. We all need things. You know, you're not a machine. Um, I believe that God designed the world in a place of structure, right? The sun has its time in the sky and then it needs to go down. The sun has its time in the sky and then it needs to go down. That's the way the structure works of the universe. And you're no different. You need to find out Maybe you need to go down for a little bit so that when it's time for you to be up again, you could be shining bright and you could be leading properly in a thoughtful kind of way. But don't expect your woman to follow you and expect everything to be all good and peaches and cream when you lead it from a place of insecurity. I'm telling you, like she might not know how to fully articulate what it is about you that she can't allow herself to submit to and fully become comfortable with, but... That's probably what it is, bro. And it's kind of like when you're having a conversation, right? And you got two people having a conversation. One person's lying and the other person is telling the truth. When you're lying in a conversation, when you're having a debate, when you're having an argument, and you're not 100% sure of what you're saying is actually the truth, um, you know, it shows. It shows. And you know that in your mind that you talking at the side of your neck a little bit. But the person who's telling the truth and they know that they're telling the truth, they can go way harder than you in the conversation because they have a level of conviction. They can reach a certain level of passion because they know that what they're saying is the absolute truth. There's no doubt in their mind that they're coming from a place of purity. That's what's happening when you're coming from a place of insecurity and you're expecting a woman to follow you. It's going to be hard for her to when you're doing not only herself a disservice, but you're doing yourself a disservice. Um, you playing yourself because nothing good comes from planting a seed in infertile soil. Um, you're going to be planting all these seeds and all this really bad soil and this really bad compost, and you're going to be watering and tending to the fields, and then you're going to be looking, and you're going to be like, okay, it's harvest season now, but I'm not really seeing nothing. Um, you're not going to be fruitful when you plant seeds not in the proper conditions, my my brother. And I say that to you as a person who's been through the same thing, and maybe it's time for you to wake up, and I hope that this um, podcast is a wake up call for you. And if you know somebody who's like this, send us to him, bro. Send us to somebody that you know who's slipping on their pippin just a little bit because we all need help. You know, again, I'm telling you things that I've experienced through my own personal experience. You know, I've I've been the person who was leading from a place of insecurity, trying to puff my chest out like, yeah, I'm the man, I'm the man. You know, you're supposed to do this for me because I'm the man, but it wasn't coming from a place of purity, you know? And once I started to lead from a place of purity, I started to get what I wanted or I started to get what I expected from that woman. And, you know, 
this is not the type of advice for a woman who doesn't respect her man already. If you have completely lost respect for your man and you are already fully checked out, then this is not for you. Um, because sometimes as a man, you could find yourself being you could find yourself being comfortable that you're doing everything that you know that you need to do to get ahead and she she still might not get with your program, bro. And if that's the case, you know, tell her to kick rocks and get rid of her, you know? Because uh, if you're doing your best, you deserve the best. It's just that simple. Life doesn't have to be complicated at all. If you're doing your best and you're not receiving the best, then she's not the best for you. And I would encourage you to explore your options and to find somebody else. I don't care how long you've been together. It could be two years, it could be three years. And same thing for the women. If you know you're if you know truthfully that you are doing your best and you are not receiving the best back and you've been patient enough and you've given it enough time, then maybe it's time for you to move around. And I think that's fine because at the end of the day, if you're not right, how could you be right for somebody else? And that's my first rule. One of the number one ways that you can lose respect from your woman is leading from a place of insecurity. So number two, you don't have enough of a life on your own. Now, what do I mean by that? Listen, I don't care how much your girl says she loves you. I don't care how many times y'all text a day. <laughs> I don't care how long the FaceTime calls are. I don't care how much she tells you she wants to be up underneath your skin. I don't care. Y'all could have just had the best day ever and then you leave and then she texts you and say, please come back. I miss you already. Women will ask you for more and more and more because she loves you, because she's infatuated with you. But what you don't understand about women is that she is not going to tell you that something's wrong until it's too late. She's probably not going to tell you that she needs space until the point that she's already burnt out. By the time she communicates to you that she's burnt out and she needs a little space, um, you know, she's been feeling that way for a while. And as a man, you're going to be confused because you're like, well, I thought everything was good. You know, I'm giving you all this time. I'm giving you all this love. I'm giving you all this affection. We hanging out every day after work, before work, on the weekends. I'm kicking it with your friends. What she's not going to tell you is that when she said that she wanted to be up underneath your skin, what, she's, what she really means is see me enough, but don't see me every day. I know I'm going to tell you that I want to see you all the time. And I know that I'm free as a woman, so I want you to be around me because I enjoy being in your company as a man. But she doesn't really mean what she says, you know? And <laughs> not to say women are children, but in a lot of ways, women are kind of like children in a way. Sometimes it's a fine line. Sometimes it's pretty synonymous. And just like a child wants candy all of the time, and they don't understand that having candy all the time is going to upset their stomach, women don't understand that getting the most of what they want is actually going to turn them off and turn them away from you. A lot of women don't understand that having a limited access to you is going to turn them off and turn them away from you. It doesn't matter how in love y'all are. It doesn't matter how cupcake y'all are. Because one thing about being in love is that when you love a girl, man, you just looking at her face. She's smiling. She look at you with that look in her eye like you're the most important person in the world. She smell good. She feel soft. She always want to, you know, make your life better in some kind of way. She allows you to be in two places at one time. Women are great, bro. And women are like the drug that just feels guiltless to have sometimes. But you can overdose on women and you can blow your high. And if you don't allow space and you don't allow the feeling of um, wanting more to settle between your relationship, you will, you, the high won't be the same. You know, you what once got you super high, it ain't going to hit the same no more. And it's going to start causing problems in your relationship. And, you know, as a man, you need to have your own hobbies. You need to have your, as a man, you need to, as a man, you need to have your own hobbies. You need to have your own friends. You need to have your own things that you got going on in life. You need to create space for her to miss you because giving her everything she wants is going to make her want to not be with you anymore. And it's so crazy that it works like that. Trust me. Um, I had to learn the hard way and I don't make the rules, man. I don't get to decide why women are the way that they are, but I can tell you that I've 
gone through these things personally and I've went through the confusion and I've firsthand got the experience and the wisdom and understood that giving her everything she wants is the quickest way to make her, you know, grow impatient with you, grow bored of you, grow tired of you. And you never want a woman to feel that way about you. So if you are the type of man that spends an unlimited amount of time with your woman, you need to find other things to do. And if you are the type of guy who doesn't have a lot of friends or don't really have hobbies that pull you away from the crib, you need to go find some. You know, get you a book, go by the lake, read for a couple of hours, just kill a couple of hours. You know, you don't be gotta, you don't gotta be gone all day, but you do need to find something else to do with your time to separate yourselves from each other. So when you grow, so when you get back together, the energy is there and the electricity, the spark is all there. You know, it's like they say, distance makes the heart grow fonder. You need to create distance to keep y'all closer together. <laughs> I don't know why it's like this. I really don't, but but it is. It's the truth. And if you disagree with this, um, I would love to have you on this podcast and I would love to talk to you about it because uh, in my experience with women, which I've been very successful with women, um, women have always loved me. I've always had a natural uh, magneticism to women and vice versa. Um, and I've learned, I would say that I my experience is up there with the best of them, for sure. So if you have a disagreement about this, then I would love to understand why it is that you feel the way that you feel, because in my experience, there is no way you can spend unlimited time with her and everything be good. Eventually, um, you know, it's going to push her away. And obviously the goal and the objective is to get closer to one another. But you can't do that when you're spending every day and every night up underneath her. It's just not going to happen. You need to... You need to carve out some time for yourself. It's the only way, man. I'm telling you. Um, you know, chances are you got things that you need to do as a man. You have things that you need to be doing that doesn't involve her being there. Get on your shit, bro. Get on your shit. Get on your grind, bro. Be a man of action, you know? Go out there and build something so that when you come back, she's excited to see you and she's um, nervous to be around you and anxious to be around you because you just always coming off as that guy. You never want to stop becoming that guy. That The number one way that guys lose respect for the women in their life is they lose that excitement that the woman once had for them. They lose that energy, that electricity. They lose that spark. And to a degree, the honeymoon phase, it doesn't last forever. It's going to dwindle off slowly but surely, but it doesn't mean that the excitement has to leave. You always want to keep the excitement in your relationship because that is how you keep a woman glued to you. You keep a woman glued to you by keeping the excitement there. You keep her on her toes. You keep her always guessing, never ever being predictable to a woman. The minute you start becoming predictable to a woman, that's when you can expect um, her to change. And you can expect the woman that you once fell in love with to no longer be there. So trust and believe one of the number one reasons a woman loses respect for you is because you do not have enough of a life of your own. She doesn't need to be there with you and the guys all the time. And you absolutely, for sure, don't need to be there with her friends every time they go hang out. Get you a life of your own and go get you some shit to do and then come back home and watch how much she appreciates you. Number three, you talk more than you show action. I think this is one of the biggest things that majority of the men struggle with because for a lot of guys, you pride, we pride ourselves on being intelligent. And one of the first and fastest ways that we prove our intelligence to a woman is through our conversation, through our thoughts, right? We want to convey to a woman that we are smart and that we are intelligent and we're not the average guy. You know, we're not the bozo on the street who getting into dumb shit. But action always speaks louder than words and it always will be. You don't want to be the man who speaks a good game. You want to be the man who lives a good game. And the only way you can live a good game is by everything that you do, everything that you construct and build with your hands. You want to be the construction worker and you need to build a foundation that a woman feels comfortable living on. You want to be the man who everything that he says he's going to do, he does it. So if you said you was going to get your credit together, then you got to get your credit together. If you said that you was going to put a down payment on the house, if you said that you was going to take her out to eat, especially that one, if you said that you were going to do something for her, you need to do it, bro. You need to follow through because that's what builds trust. And being a man of action not only builds trust for her to respect you, but it builds trust for you to respect yourself. Because 
when you lose respect for yourself, you personify a lack of respect for yourself. You know what I mean? Like, you don't give off big dick energy. You don't give off I'm the man energy. You know, you don't walk in the room with that Denzel swag. You know, you don't you don't walk in like that. You don't come in with the riz because you've lost respect for yourself. When you're a man who talks all day and you're not a man of action, listen, the man of action is the CEO of the company. The man of action is the person who employs people. The man of action is the one that people see him and they come to him and they ask him, what can I do for you? What can I do to help you make your dreams come true? Because, because I see that your train is moving to the field of opportunity, to the land of dreams, to that shit that Martin Luther King was talking about. <laughs> To that shit that Martin was talking about. And everybody wants to be on the winning team. A man of action is the man on the winning team. The man who talk all day. The man who talk about how smart he is. And he's cynical when he's having these arguments with his girlfriend. With his girlfriend because he's trying to uh, have mental gymnastics with her. And trying to outthink her. Um, Man, that 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 is only going to get you so far in life. And you might win the argument. You might win the battle but you will lose the war because you are losing respect with your woman. You're losing respect for her. And a lot of men feel comfortable winning the battle, you know, so they'll outthink their woman. You know, they're, you know, maybe she doesn't articulate herself as good as you and somehow you always find yourself winning the argument and somehow she always finds herself feeling like she's losing it. But deep down inside, she knows that you're wrong. She might not be able to articulate that completely and fully to you, but deep down inside, she knows that you're wrong. And it's because you all talk, bro. And you want to be the man of action. I promise you that a man who talks a lot, when a man of action comes around, it doesn't mean that she's going to cheat on you. But I promise you, she's going to notice the difference. And when you are in rooms and you're moving through life with your woman and you're, you know, hopefully chasing a dream and pursuing your passion and pursuing your purpose, you're going to be in rooms with other men who are doing the exact same thing. And you don't want to feel insecure. You don't want to feel... Um, you don't want to feel like you don't belong because you're leading from a place of insecurity or you don't have enough of a life of your own or you're talking more than you're leading with action. You want to feel like you fit right in and you want to feel like no matter what kind of man comes into the vicinity of me and my woman, I'm never worried about him. I'm never worried about what my woman might think about another man because I know that I supply her with everything that is that she needs. Being a man of action is the safest space you can be in. And it doesn't mean that life is going to be perfect for you. You know, once again, if you're doing everything you need to do as a man and, you know, your woman is not getting with your program, then be done with her. You know, move on because you deserve the best when you're given the best. I'm, I say that all the time. Be a man of action. There's too many men out here talking. Good, good conversationalists too. Niggas got the riz out here. Nigga talk a girl right up out her panties. But it is the man that leads by example that makes a woman want to be your wife. That's the difference between a woman being with one guy and was like, man, that nigga was trash. You know what I mean? Because everybody makes mistakes. You know, a lot of us men, we, we've been with whores before, <laughs> you know? We've been with women who are um, less than ideal for family. Um, the only difference is that maybe, you know, we didn't get, have a baby with them or maybe we didn't do anything that could leave a, um, a lasting impression on us for the rest of the women in our future to see. But we make mistakes just like women make mistakes. And sometimes a woman can be with a guy who might not be the ideal version of a man. And, you know, that's the mistake that she made. And hopefully she learned from it. But then she finds a guy who's about action. And she realizes that this is the guy that I want to be everything right for. I've been with a guy before who wasn't the ideal guy. Maybe he was a bad guy. Maybe, you know, he was charming, very attractive, whatever. But he wasn't the right guy because I realized that he's a man who just ended up talking a lot. But when she finds a man of action, she'll be like, I want to be the better woman. The woman that I was for that last guy is not who I aspire to be as a woman. I want to be Beyonce to my Jay-Z. I want to be um, Sierra to my Russell Wilson. You know, I want to be, um, you know, whatever that dream situation. I want to be my Michelle to my Obama. You have to bring that out of a woman because you have to be a man of action, a man who builds things. When you're a man of action, a woman... Um, would love to follow you because she knows that you're leading us to a safe space. It's hard for a woman to trust you when you're not leading her to a safe space. And a man of action leads a woman to a place where she has security, she has comfortability, and she can rest in her femininity. 
a lot of times guys who talk a lot leave too much room on the table for a woman to be masculine. A lot of the time women, a lot of the time women operate out of a place of survival because they've had to be the man for themselves. You know, when you're in a dangerous situation and you're in the jungle and you're in the trenches and you're trying to survive and you're trying to make ends meet, femininity doesn't put you in the mind space that is is go time. Um, masculinity does. You know, um, Kevin Samuel used to say all the time that pressure is not made for hips, it's made for shoulders. A woman, when left with no other choice and left with no other help but her own, she has to get into a survivor mode. And no woman wants to be like that. Every woman wants to be in her femininity and she wants to be dainty and, you know, she wants to hold a hand like this and she wants to paint her nails and focus on smelling good and being attractive and being a joy to be around. But it's hard for her to do that when you're not being a man of action, which means that she got to handle shit that you're not taking care of. When you're not handling your business, but the business still needs to get handled, she's going to do it because women handle business. That's one thing women do very good. They handle business. They take care of their shit. And you want to make sure that if she's taking care of her shit, it's because you appoint to her something she can do to help y'all because you're a leader. I mean, I mean, I hope that's what you want to be. That's what I aspire to be. I aspire to be a man that a woman follows behind me, not because, not by force, but by choice. Nothing that you want a woman to do is ever by force because you can't force her to do anything anyway. If you're forcing a woman to do something, then your pippin is slipping, bro. And you want her to do it because she respects you. When a woman follows a man, it's not because he's perfect. There's no such thing as perfection. So it's not that he gets everything right all the time, but it is that even when he gets things wrong, she still knows that he's the right man for the job. And now that's real love. That's real respect. And that's, what, that's how you want your woman to feel about you. And if your woman doesn't feel that way about you, well, then you got some work to do. It's that simple, you know? But women follow men that they respect, not men who are perfect. So you don't got to be perfect, bro. And it's okay that you make mistakes because we all do. Name a man out here who doesn't. I don't care how great you think he is. Marcus Garvey, Nelson Mandela, Drake, Kendrick Lamar, doesn't matter. All men fall short. But the woman in your life will continue to follow you because not because you're a man of perfection, but because you are a man of action and you're a man who does what he says. You said you did what you said you was going to do, and that makes her comfortable to be with you. Number four, you don't make her feel important. Listen, I don't want to spend too much time on this one because I got a very simple analogy that can make it very simple to you. As a man, you are a gardener. And there are multiple relationships in your life that need to be watered simultaneously. You're following your career, your relationship with your mom, your father, your brothers and your sister, your friends, and then your girlfriend. All of your plants need to be watered equally so they can all flourish at the same time. The better your relationships are with your people, the better you are because your people feed off of you and you feed off of them too. It's very reciprocal in that way, you know? Like we help each other by helping each other, by giving you receive. If you are watering your homies and watering your job more than you're watering your woman, that plant is going to stop being as happy and it's, the leaves are going to not be sticking up as much as they once were. And, you know, you're going to lose that green. They're going to use that beauty that God placed in it. Because for all my plant people, you know what it's like when you have a happy... Because for all my plant people, you know what it's like when you have a happy plant. It's just something about that green, right? Like the plant, you could tell it's smiling. You could tell the plant is happy because it's just got this beautiful hue to it. That's how you want your relationship with your woman to be. And... All plants have different watering schedules. So it doesn't mean you got to water it every single day, but you got to water it just enough to keep the plant happy. You following what I'm saying? You got to make sure that you understand your audience and you got to understand what all of your plants need. Some plants need to be watered every three days. Some plants need to be watered every single day. And some plants only need to be watered once a week, once every two weeks. Sometimes you got a cactus. Sometimes you got a monstera. Sometimes you got ivy. Sometimes you got a birds of paradise. Um, there's different plants in the world. And you need to make sure that you're watering them all equally. Because if you water your girl, your girl waters you. But if you don't water your girl, 
I can guarantee you and I can promise you that it's, it's going to create issues in your own life. Don't be so foolish and think that you can stop watering her the way she needs to be taken care of and think that it's not going to bring extra problems on your doorstep. Because it's going to be a lot harder to go hard in your business when your woman is being short with you and being impatient with you and she's irritated with you and she has a lack of patience and she doesn't want to have sex with you and she doesn't respect you anymore. So now she getting a little out of pocket and she's talking to you in ways that make you feel like, hold on, who the fuck you talking to? But you might have forgotten that you stopped watering her plant. So it's hard for her to become the best version of herself because you're neglecting her. Do not expect your woman to be everything you want her to be when you're not being everything she needs you to be. Just like a man's love language is respect, just like a man needs respect to feel love, a woman needs love to feel loved. And if you're not loving on her and you're not nourishing her and giving her the proper maintenance that she needs, man, she's going to go bad on you. It's only a matter of time, I promise you. And that creates more problems in your life because if she's distracting you, then that's less attention and less energy that you're putting in the other pots that you need to be watering. You got to build the business. You got employees. You got investments you got to make. You got overtime that you got to put in at the job. All of those things are a lot harder to do when your woman is not on your program. When your woman is not being the spark that you need to keep going, but instead she's being, a, but instead she's being the thorn in your side, that's going to slow you down and it's going to be counterproductive. When you don't take care of your woman, you don't take care of yourself because she's going to cause you problems. It don't mean that she want to leave you, but she's not happy and she's going to pout and throw tantrums and she's going to show you different ways of letting you know that I'm not okay. What are your plans, man? Make her feel important. Make her feel important. You need to make her feel like a priority. Give her attention. Give her affection. You need to make time. You know, one of my favorite rappers, Larry June, he got a song called Mission Bay off of a really great mixtape called Out the Trunk. And the line says, make time for your bitch, but always think riches. As a man, you got to chase the bag. As my mom once told me, shout out to my mom, if you chase money, you'll always have women. But if you chase women, you'll never have money. So you got to chase the bag. The bag is part of the reason why she wants to be with you, because you're a man of action, because you're a man of ambition. And that's why she's attracted to you, because she knows that following you means that you're going to lead them to a good place. But you cannot be so ambitious that you forget that she needs watering too. You need to make her feel important. Just as important as your career and your job is, she needs to feel just as important. She gets it. And trust and believe, she know what she signed up for. She know that you a busy man. She know that you got to get to the bag. She know you got shit to do. She know that you got to work hard to build this life for y'all. But just make sure that you make a little time for her too, you know? Slow down a little bit and, you know, make a little personal time for her. Get innovative, get creative, you know? Like maybe you don't got time to leave the office or have the date in the office, you know? Be intentional with your woman. Women love intentionality. She's not expecting you to be the perfect man, but she is expecting you to show effort. Trust me. And the fifth reason that men lose respect from their woman, the reason why your girl doesn't respect you anymore one of the most important ones, if not the most important one, is you stop being who you said you was. You stop being the man that you used to be. Fellas, you know, just like I know. When you start the relationship, the honeymoon phase is kicking. Everything is clicking. The sparks are there. The electricity is there. You thinking different. You innovative. You being creative. The charisma, all of that. You got to keep that shit up, bro. You got to keep that shit up. I know the honeymoon phase dies down. <laughs> I know the honeymoon phase changes. But you don't change being the guy that she fell in love with. Because a lot of men, just like women, we get lazy. We get comfortable. You get to a point where you're pursuing her and you're trying to get her to be on your side. And then you get to a point where you're like, well, now she's on my side. And you feel like you got her now. That's one of the quickest ways to get her to lose respect for you. You have to continue to be the person that thinks outside of the box. Continue doing the cute shit that you used to do. Keep the flowers coming in. Keep the innovative dates coming in. Keep the spontaneity coming in. When you used to just pull up on her without calling and tell her, hop in the car, we going somewhere. She all excited and shit. She ready to get in the car. She don't give a fuck where y'all going. You need to keep that shit up, bro. 
Don't get so distracted by what's going on in life outside of your relationship that you forget that you need to continue to be the guy that she fell in love with. Be great to your woman so she has no other choice but to be great to you. Everything that you do for her is a reflection of what it is that you want for yourself. Giving to people is the fastest way to assure what it is that you receive. A lot of time, a lot of times in relationships, we get into this place of having our hand out. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. This is what I expect. This is what I expect. I'm the man. I'm the man. This is what you're supposed to do for me. But what are you doing for her? Now, if you're doing everything you're supposed to do as the man, then by all means, you know, get you get in a new relationship. Because I'm never asking people to be delusional. I'm never asking people to lie to themselves and fool themselves. So if you're doing everything that you know you need to be doing and it's not adding up, then move around because you deserve better. And the same thing for the women. You deserve better. But you're going to lose her respect because you stop sending those text messages. You stop being cute. You stop sending those FaceTimes. You stop having those hour-long conversations. You stop being you. You stop. You stop getting your hair cut. You stop putting cologne on. You stop being sexy for her. And then you got the nerve to judge her and tell her what she doing wrong. What about you? When the last time you got rizzed up and you made her excited? When the last time you made her nervous to be around you? When the last time you did some shit that had her like, wow, this guy is really the guy. Do not expect her to not have eyes for other men when you're not doing what it takes to keep her. Now, I'm not saying it's okay for her to cheat. But what I am saying is that understand that women are human too. You know, I was having this conversation with Daily Rapper Crew. Shout out to my guys. Uh, we were talking about Insecure. And I was saying that I understood why Issa cheated on Lawrence. And Ju and Ace, they were saying, I don't understand at all. Like, what are you talking about? There's never a good reason to cheat. And I agree. It's never a good reason to cheat. But I understand why Issa cheated on Lawrence because Issa was in a vulnerable place. Lawrence, Lawrence was a bum on the couch for years. He stopped getting his hair cut. He stopped having cute dates, stopped being intentional with this woman. It was her fucking birthday, and he forgot. And not only did he forget, he expected her to be okay with being on the couch and watching TV. And after supporting him and being the breadwinner and um, not being romanced and not being wined and dined, she got tired. And in a moment of weakness, in a moment of just being human, she was vulnerable. And me and Daily Rapper Crew, we was, and me and Daily Rapper Crew, we, we had a, a disagreement about this because I was saying that when a woman is vulnerable, anything is possible. If you being a bum and a man of action come around, he's smelling good, he's looking good, handsome, attractive, go-getter, ambitious. This nigga got the riz, he's charismatic, he know how to talk to, and he get into the bag. You think that's not putting pressure on your woman? You will be a fool to think so. I don't think it's okay for her to cheat. I think she should dump you and then get with that nigga because you're not doing your motherfucking job. You're not being a motherfucking man. Everybody has their limit. Everybody has their time. Everybody can only deal with so much. Let you be in a relationship. Um, let, you, let you as a man be in a sexless relationship with your woman. Let's see how long you stay faithful. That's what I was trying to tell the guys at Daily Rapo Crew. Like, when you're vulnerable, anything is possible because you're at your weakest point. If you got a family to feed, you might have never stole before, but if your kid's hungry and you don't know another way to get food in the fridge right now, you might commit a crime because you're at a place of vulnerability. Do not put your woman in a place of vulnerability because you stop being who you used to be. If you want to maintain your relationship, stay consistent. That's the number one thing women always talk about. They say they like consistency. Consistency is the glue to your relationship. I understand why Issa cheated. She shouldn't have done it, but I understand why she did it. And I want you to remember that it's okay to lose focus every now and then because we human, bro. Nobody's bigger than the program. More important than you making her happy, make yourself happy because once you're happy, it's easier for you to give and it's easier for you to be the man that you know that you could be. If there's something in this list that you're 
slipping on something that you've lost sight of. Chances are you're not, you're not living in your balance, bro. And I share all these rules. I share all these laws that I want you to follow because when you're balanced, everything else is together. When your foundation is right, everything stands properly because the relationship is the table. She has two legs and you have two legs. And when those two legs come together, they create a table. And on that foundation, you can hold things together. You can build, you can build a home. You can build finances. You can build credit. You can build a family. But you have to be standing. If one of them legs is off just a little bit, that shit wobbling a little bit. Now you got turmoil. Now you got turbulence in your relationship. Now your shit not rock solid no more. You're not 100% secure like you used to be because y'all not standing properly. To make sure that you're in a place of security in your relationship, to make sure that your table is balanced, you got to make sure that you're not doing any of these five things. You got to make sure that you continue to be the man that she signed up to be with. Don't switch up and then act like she switched up. And um, with that being said, man, these are five reasons why your girlfriend has lost respect for you. And guys, listen, we all human. Nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. And sometimes we find ourselves being asleep at the wheel for a longer time than we intended to. Um, it happens. It's, all of these things have happened to me. I've went through every single last one of these things. That's why I can speak on it so clearly and speak on it so comfortably um, because I've made these mistakes. And I'm sharing this because I want you guys to hopefully hear this and maybe realize that maybe if not all of these things, maybe there's one or two things that you're in breach of, of doing. And I want you to wake up and snap out of it, you know, and get back to your place of normalcy. Because when you're handling your business, the business gets handled. And with that being said, I'm done, man. Um, these are the five ways that your girl, these are, the, these are the five reasons why your girlfriend no longer respects you. One, leading from a place of insecurity. Two, you don't have enough of a life of your own. Three, you talk more than you show action. Four, you don't make her feel important. And five, you stop being who you said you would be. And that's it, man. Um, I hope you guys pull some value from this. I'm trying something different. You know, halfway up is about a culmination of things that are important to me. And um, I love women. And um, I love women. I'm fascinated by women. I actually would have taken a women's study class in college if they provided it because women have always been fascinating to me. Um, trying to understand them has always been something that was just naturally remarkable to me. You know, it's just as interesting to me as making money is, you know, um, just as interesting to me as um, hip hop is. You know, I could have conversations about women all day because it's something that pertains heavily to my life. I am a heterosexual man and to understand women is to better to have a better life for myself. The more I understand women, the better relationship, the better success I have with women, I have better success in my life because if they not stressed, I'm not stressed. If they good, then I'm good. And yeah, that's it, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I hope you guys agree with a lot of it. If you don't agree, let me know. So yeah, man, these are the five things that I want you to not do. <laughs> these are the five things that I want you to avoid so that you can have a better life, man, so you can have more success in your relationships with women. And um, if you guys disagree with anything, let me know. Um, I personally think if you disagree with some of these things, then you're full of shit. But if you do, I invite you to come onto this podcast and we can have a, um, a respectful discourse about it. Because at the end of the day, if I'm wrong and there's something that I'm missing, then you're going to teach me something. If I'm learning, then that means I'm increasing my chances of having a better life. And I'm, I'm always down for that. And um, with that being said, yeah, man, this is halfway up. Um, thank you. Thank you for supporting me. And if you've listened this far, if you've listened this far and you've made it to this point, I want to personally tell you, thank you. Podcasting is simple enough, but it's really not easy. And I don't feel comfortable doing podcasting at all. Um, this is not something that I really saw myself doing in life. It's something that I more so stumbled into. You know, um, I was reaching for the stars and I landed somewhere on the moon of podcasting. And I do like it here. And I, I think that this is something that I could continue to get better at because I know there's a lot of work that I got to do. I'm not perfect. You know, um, I know there's a lot of areas that I'm that I could be better in and for you to lend me your time and for you to lend me your energy if you've ever made a like if you've ever given if you've ever given me a like if you've ever made a comment if you've ever shared anything um i just want to tell you i appreciate you man and i want to ask you if you haven't 
done any of those things. If you like this content, um, please, you know, leave a comment. Even if you don't like it, if you disagree with something, all I ever want from you is the truth. I never want you to blindly support me if that's not how you really feel because the real support will come in time. You know, I have to earn respect from people and I understand that and I'm willing to do the work. So please, if you haven't, leave a comment, share, like, definitely subscribe and please leave a review. I don't think I have any reviews left on. I don't think I have any reviews yet on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. So, you know, I would definitely love some reviews. Um, I would absolutely love to know what you think. And holla at me, man. Um, talk to me in my DMs. Text me if you got my number. Call me. Um, let's talk about this. If you think there are ways that you know that I could be better at this, if there are topics that you think that I could really speak on, if you want to talk to me about something, let's talk about it. Let's figure something out. Because at the end of the day, I want halfway up to be a community. And as always, you know, I got to give you my outro because if this might be the most important thing that I say every single episode, whenever I'm working, I will remember that done is better than perfect. And if I'm satisfied with my work, then I'm living in my purpose. Halfway up, y'all. Second time's a charm. Hopefully. <laughs>